Well, anyone that follows the Isle of Man Constabulary on Facebook and all social media will have seen today quite an interesting post showing what activity went on over this weekend. And with me is Derek Flint here, who looks after the media. Um, you put it up, but then you're telling me on the phone, oh, it's nothing that unusual. And I thought, well, that's, that makes it interesting to talk to you about it, because we'll, we'll take us through the stats you, you did do first all over the weekend. Well, one of, one of my jobs as I come on uh, on, a, on a Monday morning is just sort of try and do a bit of a wash up for the, for the media side of things and review what incidents we've had and, and where things have taken us over the weekend. And um, I was just, I get a bulletin every, every week as, as, well, uh, as well as other senior officers do. And it just struck me, do we actually sort of let the public know exactly what's going on? So I, I just put up the, uh, the statistics for the weekend, which were... Um, 161 calls for service and, and 22 arrests and it seems to have generated quite a lot of interest. People have commented on it and, uh, and um, let us know what they think. I mean, 22 arrests sounds very high to me but then you're saying it's not, that's a, a, a sort of average weekend. Tom it? Jones weekend, it's not unusual and um, if you compare it to, I just pulled out uh, before I, I came in to see you, some details for the bank holiday weekend last August and we had uh, 277 calls for service and 25 arrests. Well, so, you expect more people out and about, because I mean January should be quite quiet. I'm you sure. would have thought so, wouldn't you? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a long month uh, on the end of, uh, end of payday through to, uh, you know, to payday weekend, which is a traditionally busy period for us. And um, I think it just shows really un the unpredictability of policing to some extent. No matter uh, what plans you make and how accurate your patrol plans are, there will always be something that's thrown up which uh, just kicks things off kilter a little bit. Is this mostly to do with drinking, by the way? I mean, is, is it a, a, a trend? It, it's, there, there is a certain significance in, in terms of, if you like, disorder-related arrests over a weekend, of course there is. Um, that's usually up around uh, 39 40% of, of what we go to. But it can be a whole, a whole myriad of stuff. You know, if you have a, a spell of bad weather, that will increase calls for service for uh, both road traffic collisions, but also obstructions on the road and flooding and, and, and stuff like that, which we get called to, as well as the other responding services. So the, the, there might be something like that. There may be um, an event that's going on. In, in, in January, the, the dark nights bring their own particular problems, but the light nights of August will bring more juvenile nuisance issues and, uh, and things like that, because people are out so much later at night. There are still quite a few drink drivers uh, court. I mean, I don't know how they're being processed and what the outcome is, but they were yeah, we taken had, in. We, we had four drink drivers this weekend, and, and that always uh, shocks people. And if, if you look at the Facebook comments, that's something which um, is certainly shared with us. Uh, it, it, it just makes you wonder what we've got to do to make people really wise up to this, that it's an unacceptable risk and you will be caught. And where are we up to over the Christmas period? Because it, it was quite a Big number in them, wasn't it? It was. Uh, I can't remember the exact figures, but it was significantly up on last year. But I think we're getting more and um, more surgical as to how we're going about these things. We're stopping less people, but we're we're having more targeted success on when we are arresting people for, for drink drives. So uh, the odds are more firmly stacked against you in terms of being caught. I believe it's almost like intelligence because people are quite prepared now to shop people if they think. They shouldn't be out there on the road. We, we do get a lot more calls about people um, who are, are suspected of drink driving, much more intelligence led as you said, and, and even people c calling in with concern for the, the, the manner of driving that they've seen for somebody. It's always worth us checking out. Sometimes it is drink driving, something, sometimes it's just somebody who's lost in the, in the dark in a part of the island which they've, uh, they've never been to before. So it's always worth us just making sure that these people are uh, either committing crime or actually just need a little bit of help. So going back to this, this is an average sort of weekend for you guys. I mean, the Isle of Man has always seemed to be well policed. I mean, is, are you on top of everything? I mean, or is this the thin blue line still there even in the Isle of Man? Yeah, we can always get better. There's always, uh, there's always something which, um, you know, we might just be a little bit behind the, the envelope with. Um, and I think the pleasing thing is that even if we get a, a, a small glitch in figures, because the figures are so low, we're very, very quick to spot them, we're very quick to respond to them, um, whether it be a, a, an increasing trend in burglary, which is always a very emotive crime, through to um, road traffic collisions, drink driving, we, we do tend to be able to spool up pretty quickly and get, uh, get back on top of the game. 
So no changes between the chief constables yet. This isn't a sudden, you know, extra assertiveness. I think it's a bit early to, to, to judge Mr. Roberts just yet. Let's give him another, another couple of weeks, maybe. But uh, yeah, like I say, Tom Jones weekend, nothing unusual. And uh, maybe uh, just something we'll, we'll post a bit more regularly for people just to let them know um, what the, the constabulary is doing. And on that, social media has really been a success, hasn't it? I mean, you've got thousands of people following you and you can contact people directly and tell people the weather's good, bad, rather than people having to ring here or listen to radio stations. Yeah, I mean, social media has been um, a, a bit of an experiment for us, but we're just absolutely delighted with it. There's now over, I think it's 9,000 followers on Facebook, somewhere in the region of 4,500 on Twitter. You know, we've spoken to other government departments and tried to give them some assistance in, in um, maximising their benefits from it. And it, it, it tends to work very very well and it's a great social barometer as well because especially with Facebook you do get comments back and um, it lets you know what uh, what public views are on it are and you can see how many people that you're actually managing to contact and the reach is is quite extraordinary really and uh, I, you know I speak to people anecdotally and they do say that it's the first thing they look at in the morning now checking that the the roads are clear or if there's been anything juicy happening overnight which uh, they can read over their uh, over the cornflakes. Well, we'll just add a few more to you now. We'll put it up on the bottom of the screen here. If you haven't already uh, found them, this is where you can get all the information. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you.